The MIC funds STEM, science, technology, education, and math programs to siphon any talented graduates to work for them. This is what happens to most recruits. They don't become soldiers. They end up working for the war corporations or the Pentagon. The military calls it the brain drain. Hello and welcome to a brand new episode of Forkful of Noodles. I'm your host, Krish Mohan. Hey, before we get into this week's episode, uh, I just want to let you guys know that if you enjoy uh, the content that I am putting out, uh, whether it's these Forkful of Noodles videos, whether it's my uh, interview podcast, Taboo Table Talk, the dispatches, the road reflections, uh, the live streams, wh whatever it is, if you, if you find some uh, value out of it, uh, one big thing that you can do to help independent media such as this channel here is by hitting the like button, hitting the share button, and making sure you are subscribed to the channel. That's how we subvert and get around the censorship that channels like mine see pretty consistently. The other way you can help if you're on stable financial ground is to uh, make a donation or become a sustaining member by making monthly contributions. Uh, you can do that directly on my website at krishmohanhaha.com. That's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A.com. Thank you guys so much, and I hope you enjoyed this week's episode. War. Now, some have asked, what is it good for? The answer to that really depends on what you believe in. If you're a socialist like I am, you believe that it's good for, well, absolutely nothing, right? At the current, a standing military is probably what we would need because the need for conflict is still part of human nature. But if we all had a more peaceful outlook to problem solving, perhaps even that would seem unnecessary. At that point, the only thing we'd really need a military for is defending ourselves from hostile alien invasions or Dick Cheney's android body, because that because that's going to happen. His android body is going to be roaming around like the fucking Terminator. But under capitalism, which is what controls a majority of our governing bodies, war is good for profit or rather made good for profit. Under capitalism, war is one of the most lucrative industries around. It spawned corporations who specialize in selling instruments and methods of death. It's purchased politicians and gets a ton of advertising. And America has structured its culture and society to serve the military industrial complex or the MIC. The MIC consists of the Pentagon, uh, the corporations that sell war goods and services to the world's militaries, intelligence agencies like the CIA, allied capitalist regimes, and elected representatives on Capitol Hill. Its main goal is to fund and aid permanent warfare. And look, if there wasn't permanent warfare and new enemies to vanquish constantly, how can capitalism profit from manufactured death? I mean, sure, the easy answer to that is maybe don't turn and uh, turn war into uh, an industry that depends on infinite profit from death. But but who are you? Are Dwight Eisenhower, who predicted how terrible the military industrial complex would be for American citizens? <laughs> I doubt it. Average soldiers aren't really part of the military industrial complex. High ranking generals, on the other hand, are part of the MIC. Soldiers are expendable pawns that are used by the war profiteers that work within the MIC. And look, I, I understand that sounds a bit harsh, but let's really look at what war actually is. War is the ruling class sending the working class of one nation to battle and kill the working class of another nation. There are several ways that the MIC convinces the working class to do so. In our current climate, 
most people are overworked and underpaid. And even if they're paid well, they're most likely overworked. Under capitalism, the 40-hour work week is stretched like those jeans you desperately want to fit into right after your Thanksgiving dinner. Look, it's not going to happen, okay? And something is going to pop, right? Most Americans work multiple jobs and still don't get their basic needs covered. This means that most working class Americans are either too ex exhausted and distracted to see how unequal things actually are or are too comfortable with their own ignorance. Now, more corporations like Raytheon and Boeing and General Dynamics and so on and so on and so on and so on and so <laughs> those corporations often use the working class as scapegoats to justify their unnecessary existence. They claim they're job creators and help the working class that way. But these jobs are almost always part-time, temporary, and menial, as the working class makes the weapons of war that are used on other working class people, the CEOs of these war corporations are making about a half a billion dollars a year by selling death on a global scale. And even then, most of the major expensive pieces of weaponry that are meant to spread democracy and freedom with explosions are built overseas. The F-35 strike fighter was built in Italy and Japan. This means freedom is not really built in America. Look, even freedom is most likely made in China. Plus, this military equipment that is built by civilian labor isn't available for civilian use. And no military equipment is ever considered for civilian use until it's, it no longer serves the MIC. And that was the case with the internet the microwave, jet engines, and I also believe the pet rock. And let's be honest, even the civilians really didn't get the pet rock. You, like, I mean, it's just like, it's like a rock, right? That's, is that the whole thing? That's the whole kind of, kind of gimmick is that it's just kind of a, a rock. But these are called ancillary benefits of the war industry. Now, imagine what kind of advancements we could have come up with if we spent the amount of money we spend on the military on healthcare, education, housing, or cannabis research. But the military actually prevents the best and the brightest from going into those fields. The MIC funds STEM, science, technology, education, and math programs to siphon any talented graduates to work for them. This is what happens to most recruits. They don't become soldiers. They end up working for the war corporations or the Pentagon. The military calls it the brain drain. Yeah, that's always great to have a program named after a B horror flick from the 50s. Right? I mean, nothing says you're a serious organization like a fucking rhyme screen, rhyme scheme. <laughs> I laughed at my own joke and fucked it up. <laughs> But the military funding of STEM effectively kills effective science, which is based on free and open discussion. The military now financially controls that discussion to, to use STEM as an instrument of death rather than uh, one of progress. Look, LSD is demonized by the MIC because there was no offensive use for it. But Research from all around the world has proven that LSD can be used to treat depression, anxiety, and a bunch of other mental health issues. Plus, it'll also get you to see that most wars are based on bullshit and it's just rich dudes jerking each other, jerking themselves off to show other rich dudes how awesome they are at jerking themselves off. But to further prevent the working class from seeing the truth, Hollywood films are used to show the military in a very positive light. The American military is always presented as the good guys who are there to save the savage black and brown folks who can't help but beat their own enemies. Oh, right. If, if there was another reason you needed to be against the MIC, it's racist as fuck. Right. But but that racism is sold as patriotism. So if you're not racist, then 
are you truly American? The military industrial complex says, no, no, you are not. Every pro-nationalist America movie, which could just be titled White Savior, the American Dick Measuring Story, has an average American soldier that battles against the odds against the rabid black or brown terrorists to bring freedom and democracy to the faces of the little black and brown children. I mean, doesn't that just warm the cockles of your heart? And it doesn't have to be a pro-nationalist movie, right? It could be an action flick or a comic book movie or a romantic comedy that uses some kind of military equipment. And if they do, the MIC has to be involved. In most cases, they'll send a, a, a script supervisor uh, to make sure that uh, narratives uh, are, are what they'd like them to be. And in a lot of these movies, the, the it shows intelligent agents from organizations like the CIA as like badass martial arts experts and they're wildly athletic and none of that is actually true i mean let's take a second and just think about it here okay does it look like mike pompeo knows judo all right do you think that man can execute a flawless sidekick it has been decades since he has seen his own penis. The second he decided he wants to coo Iran, his penis just shriveled up. All right. You don't have time for erection when you're, quote, liberating savages. OK, do you think at his prime, George Bush was a Taekwondo master? More like Taekwondo. Fuck, no. The, the gentle breeze created by uttering the word socialism can knock over George Bush in his prime. OK, if a feather from a goose down pillow lands on him the wrong way, we have to shut down Texas and get him to a hospital stat. These people's bodies might be more frail than their egos. But Hollywood isn't as bad as corporate media when it comes to being the propaganda mouthpiece of the MIC. Corporate media's goal is to maintain economic order by constantly manufacturing consent for war. They do this not only with the tragedy they call the news, but also with ads. Ads that make joining the military look like you'd be the hero of your own video game titled White Savior. The movie is now a video game that you can live. And sure, we can expect a right wing ne network like CNN or a clinically insane network like Fox News to do it. But outlets like NPR are also responsible. And this is because NPR is an outlet that has the facade of a lovey left wing news outlet with its dulcet tones and stories about Gen 2 penguins and shit. But let's not forget that they were calling for the U.S. to go to war with Iraq over no proof over nothing. There was no proof that they had weapons of mass destruction. We know this now. And NPR was advocating for it because NPR, much like the other alphabet news corporations, is also funded by the military industrial complex. And every so often, networks like NPR will do what can be considered an anti-war segment. But they conclude without going into the details of warfare and just say, well, war can be bad. And this is useful for the MIC because then they get to deflect any claims that they're an authoritarian force. I mean, what authoritarian force would let a media outlet take a hardcore stance like war bad? Well, maybe it, it, uh, it really depends. Really, wh wh who are we talking about here? Is there, what, what shade of uh, color is their skin? Is it an appropriate shade of uh, brown or, 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 or what? Now, the primary goal for corporate media is to sensationalize fear, right? Every threat, real or not, has to be hyped up. So making the claim that Muslims are out to get you and your wholesome Christian baby is necessary to fuel support for the war industry. There's a higher chance you get hit by lightning than a Muslim. There's a higher likelihood that Mike Pompeo does a roundhouse kick without shitting himself before you get kicked or killed by a Muslim. Fear is so profitable that I am shocked America doesn't keep the Halloween store spirit open all year round. Now, the working class is tricked into believing that America needs to be at war at all times. And with capitalism at its side, the military industrial complex has used 
uses jobs as a weapon of ignorance against the working class citizens of America. Then they double down with heavy artillery of corporate media and Hollywood propaganda to ensure that dissent is seen as a national security threat rather than what it is, which is something that we the people need to do to ensure that power doesn't run amok. And that has been your fork full of noodles for this week. I hope you guys enjoyed the episode. If you did, if you did, uh, please give it a thumbs up. Uh, and please share this out with as many friends as you can. Share it with some friends. Share it with some enemies. Share it with anybody that you feel uh, would benefit from from hearing content like this. That that maybe you can have a conversation with. Uh, that's that's always the hope is that uh, you can you can share this with some folks and 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 start a dialogue. Maybe maybe learn some different perspectives, and so on and so forth. Uh, the other thing I wanted to mention is I do have some uh, show dates coming up. Some show dates, some virtual shows. Um, uh, some Forkful of Noodles recordings where you can be a part of a virtual audience for Forkful of Noodles. And I have some in-person uh, show dates coming up as well. Uh, I'm going to be performing my uh, new stand-up comedy hour, Citizen Revolution, um, in some select places over the winter. And then I'll be going on tour uh, in 2020, hopefully, fingers crossed. Uh, but in the meantime, I'm also performing my stand-up show virtually over Zoom. So if you want to be in the audience for any of those things, um, you can go directly to my website to grab tickets. That's krishmohanhaha.com. It's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A.com. I've got a couple of virtual shows to round out the year, and then I'm, I'm kicking back into doing monthly Forkful of Noodles recordings uh, at, the, uh, at the beginning of the year as well. So I'm very excited to get back into those. Again, you can find tickets and details for all of the shows that are coming up on my website, krishmohanhaha.com, K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A.com. Uh, while you're there, you can grab a stand-up comedy album. You can check out past episodes of my show. You can sign up for my email list. Uh, you can become a sustaining member, get free tickets to virtual shows and live shows when I come to your city, uh, plus a bunch of other cool bonus exclusive content as well. Uh, so tons of stuff uh, to do right on the on the website. So again, the website is krishmohanhaha.com. Uh, thank you again for tuning in. Thank you again to the people that uh, consistently support the show by sharing, by watching, by liking, by leaving uh, leaving really cool and awesome comments. Um, and to and to those folks that uh, that do become sustaining members as well, uh, you guys are amazing. You guys help keep uh, keep the show going. Keep keep me keep me working as 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 hard as I do and and sharing the content uh, that I really really love and enjoy to share. Uh, so with all of that said and done, uh, thank you so much for tuning in, and we'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.